The brief synopsis for Immaculate, Sydney Sweeney stars as Cecilia, an American nun of devout faith, embarking on a new journey in a remote convent in the picturesque Italian countryside. Cecilia's warm, warm welcome quickly devolves into a nightmare as it becomes clear her new home harbors a sinister secret and unspeakable horrors. So, Chase, do you want me to go first on this one? Yeah, go for it. All right. I liked this movie quite a bit. I, everyone out there knows I, I love horror, love, love, love horror. And I have a great appreciation for some iconic classics in particular. I, I keep referencing like late sixties, seventies, early eighties for something like this. And I think it channels those movies like quite beautifully and respectfully. I loved the simplicity and the elegance of Immaculate. And I, I think I think it matches those movies in terms of of its visual visuals and how the imagery is stylized, but also in terms of pacing and, you know, the time taken to have a excuse my language, a holy shit ending, but building to the point where you earn those those wild, outrageous, disturbing situations and horrific visuals. I think it does all of that. I mean, really exceptionally well. So I highly recommend Immaculate. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. It's been interesting because this has become a little bit more divisive mm -hmm. of a movie, I think. <laughs> and I think it's because some people felt it didn't. I, I had read one review that I'd never seen someone say this, that they wanted more exposition. They wanted to know more about mm -hmm. her character. But I think for, for folks that don't know, it's very efficient in terms of her character as someone that was spared from certain death as a child. She thinks this is divine. That's what motivated her to come here. And it is kind of that all collapsing around her. And I can't talk about the ending because it's best experience with no idea what it is. But I think there's a moment in the middle too that I can talk about a little bit where she's trying to find her way out. She comes up with a very clever solution that then culminates in I think a really striking scene in a field and it's like little moments like that, that really, I think work. And I think her performance is maybe the best she's ever done. Yeah. I, not like a large amount. Cause I think reality that she was in a couple years ago was great, but this mm -hmm. is, this is quite something. It's like, this is giving every ounce of your, not that reality is not, but this felt like someone giving every ounce of themselves and then some to a role. But, you know, going back to what you said again, no spoilers here, but that part in the middle of the movie is something that I really appreciate because a lot of times we, you know, we, we sit back and we watch horror movies and we're like, you idiot. Like, why would you do that? I really that appreciated smart. that there was a really smartly executed plan in the midst there. I really, I really loved that, but like she is, she's like a true powerhouse. Like you can't watch a movie like Immaculate and then walk away and say to yourself, she's not a movie star. Like she's not an anchor to a film. This film, there's a lot of wonderful things happening in this film and some great supporting performances that I also really enjoyed. And, and I think supporting performances that make a big impression with a lot less screen time, which I think is very difficult, but there is no denying that Immaculate rests on her shoulders. If she can't, if she can't pull you in with with Cecilia's kind of like warmth and big heart at the beginning and and her enthusiasm to to build a new life in this convent the the rest of the movie is not going to work but then on top of that she has to like oh so delicately go from from that you know like wide-eyed woman we see walk into the convent to like the absolutely feral state we find her in at the end and she has to do that all in a believable manner and that's not easy and she pulls it off like extremely well i can't imagine her doing more than what she did in this movie oh absolutely i think not that awards matter too much like the art speaks for itself but when we talk about like horror performances often being overlooked for awards i think this is probably one of those that's up there where it's like very much built around her, that kind of slow, gradual shift in perspective, in faith, in belief, without really calling attention to itself, without really overstating anything, with having some moments of dark humor that I think really work. Mm -hmm. I won't say what it is, but there's one like exclamation that she gives towards the <laughs> there end. Was, there was one line yeah. and I, I like cackled. That was great. I help it. <laughs> And so that that all works because it's jokes that are not like winking to the audience, but are just like, oh, man, it's like 
it's bound up in this journey that she's on. I really liked it. I hope people also have perspectives on it and get a chance to see it soon. I, I don't know. I'm worried it could get lost in the shuffle because there is the first Omen that's coming out that is like a sequel to or a prequel to another movie, whereas this is its own original thing that draws from these influences, but still the ending in particular is unlike anything that you'll probably see this year. I don't want to oversell the ending because I think the rest of it is good too and don't want it to be that people just expect Oh yeah. to go because like they released a trailer of basically a lot of the ending and are like, this is amazing. And it is, but I think the rest of it is also quite something too. Yeah, I mean, I, I love how I'm about to say, I don't want to overstate it as you just warned, but I do have to be honest and say, I think I think the ending of this movie will likely wind up being one of my favorite scenes, one of my favorite shots of the entire year. I, I keep calling it a filmmaking feat because it is one on so many levels. It's it's a standout performance beat beat like in the midst of many other standout performance beats. But like that is like a top tier one. But then also what every single department needs to be doing in order to pull something like that off it is like a really it's like a next level filmmaking challenge. And. I appreciated the moment. I appreciated how it served the movie in the context of the film itself. But I also look at something like that and like you could practically see like fireworks going off around me while I'm seeing this shot unfold in such like a well executed manner. So I do have to tee it up. I can't help it. It's great. No, I'm 100 percent with you and your interview where they had talked about how this was the first take of the shot. Great. Amazing. Ow. It was so good that they were like, perfect. <laughs> they did two, only two takes. They definitely, I'll bet you anything, they did that take and we're like, shit, that's great. We're just going to use this first take. We, have to, do, we have to do one more for safety or something. Yeah. But they, they knew what they were doing. I mean, that's one other broader thing that I really appreciate about this movie is that, you know, we were kind of just talking about this with uh, Late Night with the Devil, too. It's not horror for the sake of horror. You could watch this movie and watch every single frame in it and know everything was crafted with, with distinct purpose and detail. So another shout out to Michael Mohan, the director. And, you know, I I thought The Boyers was, was pretty good. I enjoyed watching it during lockdown. But this is very clearly a step up for the two of them as as collaborators as in this industry. So I want to see them make more together. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I hope they make another one. 